see um, I'm professional. <laughs> All right. Well, I want to say welcome, welcome everyone to uh, the continuation of our topics focused on helping small businesses uh, this year. We've had every topic from uh, small business uh, tax tips, strategic planning for um, small businesses. And once again, um, I can't believe that we're pretty much halfway through the year. And it's June 1st already when we're starting off and kicking off hurricane season. Um, so it's a topic that we wanted to um, talk about because a lot of our small businesses and businesses in general are not ready. Um, they don't know what they should have and what causes they should have in their um, insurance plan. Uh, they don't know how to best prepare themselves in case something happens. So we wanted to bring in the experts to do that um, for you. So welcome to Disaster Preparedness for Small Business. And if you pay attention, maybe if you ask a really good question, I don't know, you may get a hurricane preparedness kit uh, tonight that I get to draw out of the little uh, jar. Um, but anyhow, I'm extremely happy to have our speaker here tonight, and she's brought along um, one of her colleagues as well to speak on disaster preparedness for small businesses, what you need to know to make sure you're ready. So feel free to ask questions, um, type them in the chat or what have you, but we want this to be um, interactive as well as informative. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome up Judy Judith Merguez, please let me know if I said that right or if I just tore up your name, please let me know. <laughs> it's okay. Everyone does it. <laughs> Margillis. It, it is Morgillis. Morgillis. Okay. <laughs> yes. And Judy is fine. Hi, everyone. How are you? Thanks for being here tonight. Thank you for Judith. having us. I am Working on sharing my screen yeah, here. Stop sharing so you can yeah. you can share. You should have permission to share. Uh-huh. You do. One second. And does your presentation include a little bit about yourself too, Judith? Because I think it's important for them to to I know. I would do that first. Yeah. That would be no yeah. problem. Okay. <laughs> My name is Judith Mergellis. I am the Quality Assurance Director with Seeds Mitigation and Restoration Experts. And we have some of our team members with us as well in the room and online. Just wanted everyone to know a little bit about our background. Um, we've been working in insurance for a combined between our staff and administrators over 20 plus years. And we had experience in property and casualty and also with all of the types of insurance, but that would be the expertise that comes into play today. Um, with the restoration mitigation company, we assist homeowners that have damage caused by water, fire, mold, storm, and disaster relief. Um, because of hurricane season, that's going to be our primary job. And as bringing everyone in preparedness for hurricane season, we want to let you know, um, in addition to our background in insurance and property and casualty, we have a combined experience of over 15 years as insurance adjusters, which means we've worked for the insurance company. We've worked all major storms in multiple states, counting from the Carolinas, Georgia, Texas, California. So we worked the fires, the storms, the hail, whatever you name it, we've done it, kind of like storm chasing. So working for the insurance company, we are the ones that will usually approve or deny your claims. So we are aware of what the insurance company is looking for to make sure that your um, process goes smoothly. We do um, have expertise in other fields as far as our certifications. We are certified in all of the services that we provide, including certified water mm -hmm. extractors, water damage, mold fire, health and safety, trauma, and disaster relief. And we also try to put an emphasis on health and safety when we are into in your home as well. I would like to give you guys the option to ask questions as we go along. So my colleague will be on. You can ask him any questions as I present the slides. If something come up and you want to ask it right there and then put it in the chat and we'll be happy to help you with that as well. 
No, perfect, Judith. That was a lovely synopsis. So everybody <laughs> has a really good idea of what it is. You all do your background. So I'm going to turn it over to you to go ahead, you and Sean rather, uh, to go ahead with your presentation. Okay. And while she's doing that, welcome to everyone who has joined us tonight. Uh, once again, um, as Judith said, you know, feel free to ask questions, drop it in the chat. Um, I know Sean will monitor it. I will try my best to do the same. <laughs> and at the end, we'll be giving away a hurricane preparedness kit. So you got to pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> Might get a quiz. Thank you, Judith. Thank you. Okay, as can everybody see my screen? If you can't, please let me know in the chat. Um, I wanted to start off with um, mostly most of the hurricane preparedness programs that you have around Florida. It's usually giving you an idea of what you need to pack, how to prepare for amount of food, cans, shelter, and so forth. I feel like most of us have been living in Florida for a numerous amount of years, or we've at least have gone through at least one hurricane season already. So putting together hurricane kits and making sure we have water, canned food, and all that good stuff is something that we're well versed in. Um, our primary reason here today is we want to know how do we protect our biggest asset. We, as small businesses, own, small business owners, is our business, our livelihood. We want to know if we obtain any damages, are we covered? So we wanted to gear this presentation more so towards your insurance policies and your coverage. So when you do, if you have to ever put in a claim, we can guide you as to do you have the right coverage now so you don't have the problem later. So we're looking into your insurance policies and preparation through education is less costly than learning through tragedy. Some of the key points that we want to talk about is understanding my policy. Most individuals, their mindset is I have paid my premium, now what? If my premium is paid, there's no lapse in coverage, everything should be fine. But we want to um, have the key points as to what other things in your policy you need to look at to make sure you're fully covered. And some of these things are, why does my effective date matter? The date that your policy starts, why is that a big deal when it comes to putting in a claim? What are endorsements, inclusions, and limitations in your policy? What do they stand for? What are they there for? What are deductibles versus policy limits? Most insureds know what a deductible is, but is, are not sure what policy limits are, and if they are the same things, what the difference between the two. And lastly, we want to cover why do I need flood insurance? Again, if you are required to get flood insurance because you're in a flood zone, it's mandatory. Most people have to get it. But others think because you're not in a flood zone and they don't have to spend an extra couple hundred dollars, then it's fine. But we want to also, especially business owners, let them know why it's so important to also have flood coverage in addition to your policy. Again, I paid my premium, now what? Do you understand your policy? You are paying your premium, but do you honestly know your coverage? Your policy has several, is a binding contract, first and foremost, that have different um, steps you have to look at as far as what plans to look at, but also when you look at your pages, there's a declaration page known as a deck page. It's kind of like a summary of everything in your policy. Then you have your policy coverages, which is also known as insuring agreements. You have your endorsement, inclusions, limitations, and then you have conditions that you have agreed upon. First, we want to look at what does my effective date matter? Why does it matter? I know most people that are not in the industry might not be aware of all the changes that have happened to homeowner policies in the past or business policies in the past couple of months. Um, you just see that your policies are rising and you don't know why the cost is getting um, higher, but then you don't see any difference into what your coverage is. So last year, about November, you might have heard of the Senate Bill 2A. And these are some of just the key points that they touch upon that is important to policyholders. First thing we need to look at in your policy is your claim filing deadline. With this new Senate Bill 2A, it reduces the time to file the first claim to one year and 18 months total for supplemental claims. 
This is effective for any policy that was renewed on or after December 16th, 2002. You used to have two years to report a claim and three years for supplements. But if your policy has been renewed anytime after December 16th, 2002, you now only have one year to report a claim and 18 months to report any supplement. And also there's a lot of new regulations of insurance in Florida, which means the Office of Insurance Regulation is subject to insure to a market conduct examination after a hurricane, which is also effective for policies December 16th, 2022. And, but some of the good things that come out of this bill is the prompt pay laws for property insurance. It reduces the time for an insurer from 90 days to 60 days to pay or deny a claim. Now your carrier has 60 days to either pay your claim or deny it. Um, instead of that's 30 days less, you'll have an answer as to whether or not they will be paying off the claim if it's a paid loss or if it's a denial. We also have, it reduces the time for insurers to review acknowledged claims from 14 days to seven days. So now they have seven days to review a claim that you've submitted and acknowledge it. It reduces the time from 14 to seven days to begin an investigation. Also reduces from 45 days to 30 days to conduct a physical investigation. And that also applies to hurricane plane claims. And lastly, it requires an insurer to send adjusters report within seven days. So when they do assign your claim to an insurance adjuster, they have to have that report done within seven days. This is a way to try to reduce the gap as to how long you have to wait to get a policy paid out. Another big change to this um, bill is going to be your awards of attorney fees. This particular um, Claim removes the right to attain prevailing party attorney fees arising from residential or commercial property insurance, effective on all policies renewed or purchased on or after December 16th. That means in layman's terms, once you put in a claim and you hired an attorney to represent you for said claim, whatever bills that inquire, acquire from the attorney, they were able to bill your insurance company directly for their fees. As any policy now that has been written after December 16th, 2022, the attorney can no longer submit their fees to the insurance company for them to be paid out. Now is the responsibility of the homeowner or policy owner to pay those attorney fees, which is a big change as to how we're going to do business and how homeowners are going to decide if they want to hire representation or not. Again, a disclaimer to this is Hurricane Ian and Nicole claims can still file within two years and three years for supplementals does not affect those in um, hurricane and those are not subjected to the new awards of attorney fees as well. Um, also, Florida Optional Reinsurance Assistance Program, which is a big change for 2023, which we can always go into detail. It's a lot of changes in that aspect. We can, we're can we happy to sit with you and give you more details about that. It creates an optional hurricane reinsurance program for the 2023 season, which we are in now, and in true hurricane form for the state of Florida, first day of hurricane season, we have a tropical depression in the Gulf of Mexico, which will be a tropical storm by tonight, first thing tomorrow morning. And lastly, one other thing I want to um, point out as far as some of the changes is your assignment of benefits, which is a contract usually signed between you sign for your contractors that you work with. It can be your mitigation company, your roofer, whoever you work with to help mitigate losses in your home. This gives us permission to be able to negotiate our prices directly with the insurance company and for us to get paid directly through the insurance company. Now with the assignment of benefits provision, any policy purchased or renewed on or after January 1st, that means if your effective date is on or after January 1st, 2023, you are no longer able to use assignment of benefits when you um, have a claim placed. We are we do have some other bills that we are looking at that's going to be changing to your policy for this year. 
I've listed them below. And again, it's a lot of changes. We can't list everything here today, but we'll be happy to give you more information. One of the biggest changes are going to be your Senate Bill 1398, which talks about your public adjuster's bill pending effective date of July 1st. This will have a big impact on how public adjusters are able to do business in the state of Florida, how they're able to bill, and how they're able to work with their clients. So this is something you also want to be knowledgeable about when you decide if you're going to go about your claim independently, if you're going to hire any representation. Is everybody with me? I also want to now talk about your endorsements, exclusions, and limitations. Uh, again, you know everything you need to know about your deductible is straightforward. You know what that deductible is. You know if you any loss um, below deductible, how that format is set up. But a lot of times you never look into your insurance policy for what endorsements, inclusions, and limitations are. Either they're going to provide additional coverage for you, they can take away coverage and or limit your policy coverage. Examples of inclusions may include earthquakes, hurricanes, tornadoes, and floods, which we will discuss later. If you need to fill gaps in your coverage, you can add an endorsement to your policy that helps um, to fill in the gaps of certain coverage that you don't have or there's a limit to a coverage. And the limitations or limits of liability is the maximum dollar amount or percentage of the total loss or combination that may be reimbursed under the policy in a given claim or period. Now we look at your deductibles versus your policy limits. Again, the deductible is the amount of a covered claim that is your responsibility, the responsibility of the insured. You've known that straightforward when you have a claim, if your deductible is 2,500, 1,500, whatever it may be, your deductible will be deducted from whatever payout you are awarded from your insurance company. But your policy limit, which is the maximum your insurance company will pay for a covered loss. And when you have a policy limit, uh, it could be an overall limit, or it can be a limit on certain items. It can be a limit on your water mitigation. It can be a limit on mold. So you need to check your policy and see, do I have any limitations? If I suffer a loss and the water damage based on the estimate by my mitigation company or my adjuster is going to be $35,000 for me to get this fixed for my house to go back to pre-disaster state, but your policy has a policy limit of $10,000, then you are out of pocket for the $25,000. Because even if the insurance company writes your estimate that is going to take $35,000 to fix that damage, and they will tell you exactly what the amount is based on their estimate, they're only allowed to pay the policy limit of what you have taken out. So the deductible is used as a form of risk sharing between you and your insurance company. Typically, a range of deductibles are offered to small businesses. Usually, the larger the deductible, the less you pay in premiums. Hurricane deductibles is a different factor. FYI, in hurricane-prone states like Florida, special deductions may apply for insurance claims when the cause of damage is attributed to a hurricane. A lot of Individuals do not know that they might have two deductibles, one deductible for every other peril and another deductible for their um, hurricane. So you need to look in your policy and see what my hurricane deductible is if I have one. And also policy limits are the cap at which your insurance company will settle your claim. The amount depends on how much insurance you purchase. So no matter how much you fight and says, this is what my claim is. This is how much. If you have a cap or you have a limit that you purchase on your policy, they cannot pay you beyond that limit, no matter if you can prove that your claim is beyond that. I just um, add an example of a policy that you can see where a hurricane deductible here. Again, this is just an example of a real policy, but it doesn't have to be 5%. It can be 5%, it can be 10%. So for this particular policy, the hurricane deductible is 5% of coverage A, which is your total of 12,400. And then all other perils, any other damages that happen, the deductible is 2,500. It's a set rate compared to this being a percentage. 
as well. And I also want to show you what a limitation looks like. When you're looking into your policy, you might see different limitations. Right here, we have a limit on fungi, which is mold, which is a $10,000 limit that is purchased in this policy. You can have a higher limit, you can have a lower limit, but again, that's how they adjust your premium based on what you purchase. So if you have mold in your home, which we all know if we have standing water for more than 48 hours, most likely you're going to have mold. And if you do need to have any mold removed or mold remediation done, you will have to look at what your policy limit is. We also have another example of a policy here. This one gives you more of an idea of other limits that you might have. This one has a limited water damage coverage of 10,000. Then it has a mold coverage of 10,000. So you can have several limitations on one policy, and this is where your endorsements kick in. You can add additional endorsements to give you more coverage or endorsements, and this instance limits your coverage. So now that we've um, talked about all the different things in your policy, we want to know, we want to talk about the flood insurance. Again, natural disasters such as hurricanes, tropical storms, nor'easters can cause wind and floodwater damage to your property. Your flood insurance policy only covers physical damage directly caused by a flood. National flood insurance program policy covers damage caused by water entering your home from the ground up due to storm surge heavy rainfall or the overflow of a body of water, such as a lake or river. Other policies, such as your homeowner's policies, do not cover water damage from flood, but may cover damage from other perils, such as rain, wind-driven rain. If river overflow or rain causes flash flooding that enters your home, this is considered a direct result of flooding. It would likely be covered under your flood insurance policy. However, if rain is propelled into a covered structure by wind, that is considered wind-driven rain and is not covered under your flood insurance policy. The same is true if your roof is damaged and water enters through the ceiling. This is water damage as a result of wind damage and is not covered under your flood insurance. So this is the importance of having both policies because you can have damage through flood and when driven rent at the same time. And your um, homeowners or business insurance will cover the wind driven rain or the other perils, but it will not cover anything that has to do with flood insurance. That has to be purchased separately. And just a FYI, flood insurance takes um, approximately 30 days to become effective. We are in the middle of hurricane season, well, start of hurricane season today. So if you do not have flood insurance and you decide to purchase it, if you're able to purchase once um, we're in the middle of the season, it would not be effective 30 days from the day you purchase this insurance. And most of your policies should have something written like this. This is from an actual policy that, again, we've inserted. It tells you directly that flood insurance, that they are recommending for you to purchase flood insurance, even if you're not in a flood zone, just because they will not cover any of those damages, even if it's because of a hurricane. So if you've now looked at your inclusions, exclusions, limitations, deductibles, policy limits, and you get a better understanding of your policy. Now you know I'm fully covered to the extent that I wanna be covered, now what? The next step to this is gonna be your, your responsibility. What is the insured's responsibility when there is a disaster or a storm? That's where your conditions come in in your policy. When you look under your conditions section, this is conditions that you have agreed to. The condition section includes the policy provisions that qualify or limit the insurance company's promise to pay or perform. That means if you don't meet the conditions laid out here, the insurer would, could deny your claim. One condition you might see in a homeowner's policy is protecting your property after a loss to prevent further damage or allowing the insurer to inspect the damage before you begin repairs. Some other conditions may relate to segregation rights, loss reporting, settlement, or cancellation or non-renewal. When they talk about um, preventing further damage, that means they know there was a storm, they know the dates of the storm, so they are aware that you might have damage. But if you have a leaky roof and you call in to put in a claim for your roof, you cannot 
just wait for seven to 14 business days for someone to come out and take a look at that while additional rain is happening and additional damage. Those Any additional damage that's caused by negligence or the fact that you did not prevent any further loss would not be covered. So when you walk around during a storm, you see all those blue tarps on top of your roof. Those are some of the measures that's put in place by your restoration company to help mitigate further damages. So a reminder, you are responsible to mitigate any further damages under most conditions in your policy. This is where your mitigation and restoration company plays a big factor in your claims process. Our goal is to make sure we assist you to get paid for your loss as well. And so now that you've had everything you need to file your claim, how do you report a claim once a disaster happens? Depending on your insurance company, they have specific ways you can report your claim. You can do it online or through your mobile app. Most companies now have a mobile app where you can report the claim on there, take pictures from your phone or your device and upload it. A lot of times if it's a complicated claim, if you need some guidance, you can go through your insurance agent or your insurance broker. They are qualified to assist you with reporting a claim. Or most insurance companies also, if you just want to call in, they have a claims line where you can call in and speak to someone directly to the insurance company and report a claim that way. And in instances when there is a disaster or a hurricane, you have multiple insurance companies that have um, mobile sites where you can meet them at a mobile site and they can assist you with a paper application or manual because at that instance, you might not have access to a phone or a computer or any um, Wi-Fi because um, the lights are down, FPL is down, internet is down, but they will give you options to do a manual or paper application and might have mobile sites for you to use as well. And you might also see once you put in a claim or even just a disaster in general, you're going to have many players as part of your process. It might get very intimidating, very confusing. You're like, who's all these people? Why do I have to talk to everyone? Who's here to assist me? And what am I supposed to do? So some of the individuals or experts that are going to be helping you and guiding you through your claim process are a for, first and foremost is going to be your insurance company or your carrier. Then you're looking at your IA, which is your insurance adjuster. This is the adjuster that works directly with the insurance company. They are usually assigned your claim, and now you know they have you know the time periods they have to um, call you and come in and do a physical assessment. They come into your home, they assess the damage, they give an estimate, and they will be the one that's assisting and knowing if your claim is approved or denied. And if it is approved, what's the limit is approved? Some insurance adjusters work your claim from beginning to end. They make the final decision. In some or most cases, they are the one that goes out and do the physical assessment and submit everything over to what they call your desk adjuster or your desk examiner. They get all your reports from the field, review your policy, your limitations, exclusion, and they will make the ultimate decision on approving or denying your claim and at what amount you approve or denied for. So the, your insurance adjuster and desk adjuster works directly for your insurance company. Again, your insurance company will guide you through the process as far as how to file a claim and where to go from there. But for um, most individuals who says, hey, I don't know anything about what's going on. I wanna protect my interests. They look into hiring someone to assist them with their claim. That's when you have your option to either go with the PA, which is a public adjuster, working for the people, they work for you directly, or for a property attorney. With your public adjuster, they do typically almost the same thing as your insurance adjuster. They'll come out, they are going to review your, um, your damage. They might write their own estimate, which is a comparable estimate to what the insurance company um, writes. And they can say, hey, I don't agree with what you said. Based on my estimate, I think this is what they should. So they're advocating on your behalf. The good thing about using um, the assistance of a public adjuster is the fact that they get paid based on how much they're able to get you. 
So if you were able to work through your insurance company and you get paid ten thousand dollars for a claim on your own, you get paid ten thousand dollars. If your insurance, if your public adjuster who's more knowledgeable and able to give you um, further assistance is able to get you thirty thousand dollars for a claim, maybe your claim is forty thousand forty five. They're able to get you um, twenty thousand more than what the insurance company um, would settle for. They get a percentage of what on what they are able to get you. You don't pay them anything besides that. And also to protect the public, there are rules and regulations in place for insurance, for public adjusters as far as how much they can charge you percentage wise when it is um, considered a national disaster. So they have their regular rates, which can range from 15, 20, 25 percent. Everyone's different. I am not sure of um, depending on who you hire, but then the state sets a set rates when they are a disaster of how much they're able to charge and they cannot go above that. And then you have your attorney, um, property attorney as well, which have a little bit more you as far as I'm um, taking your file to court if you're not able to resolve it in a timely manner. And so those two would be the representatives you have to choose from and assist you with your claim. Then you have your mitigation restoration company, which is what we are, SIDS mitigation restoration experts. We do a lot of consultation, we do a lot of education, and we guide our clients through the process as much as we can and as much as we're able to. Um, but we are, again, usually the first person that's called out to make sure we mitigate that damage while you're filing your claim, while you're waiting for everything to be settled. We'll be the one extracting the water out of your home, putting in the machines, humidifiers, making sure everything's dried out, trying our best to not um, have any mold growth. Um, it's, so the sooner you call your restoration mitigation company, the better it is for your claim. And if you go through all the process that's put in place and you either don't get the allotable amount that you need for your claim or you're not happy with the results, you have other options to go through appraisal or umpire, which is something you can get into more detail with us or with your public adjuster or attorney. And lastly, the last player in this project will be your contractor slash rebuild company. That can be the same as your mitigation company in some instance or independently. Once you get paid out your claim, then you will have your contractors or your rebuild company that's going to come out and rebuild your home to pre-disaster state. One of the um, services that we don't do ourselves. So we thought would be a great resource for small businesses in particular is because the process can be so long for you to get paid out on a claim. And sometimes you cannot wait that long to make sure that your property is back and running, especially if you're a business owner, every day that you're out of commission, you're losing money. The um, SBA does have a disaster assistance program and they're actually in Broward in three locations right now from the flood. And I believe they'll be here till June 8th. And with these um, types of loans, you have you don't have to accept the loan if you're approved for it, but you have an option to, I believe it's two months to decide if you're gonna take the loan or not. But this loan helps for a business physical disaster loans up to $2 million to repair or replace disaster damaged property owned by the business it can be real estate, inventory, supplies, machine, equipment, and it's any business of any size, regardless if they're private, um, private or non-for-profit. Again, you can use this money, use this loan to start the construction and rebuilding process until you get paid from your insurance company. You can use that to pay back the loan. And you can get approved to up to $2 million, but you can choose if you decide to take this loan, from the, if you get paid your claim and say, hey, I don't need the loan, you can decline it. Or you can say, I don't need this much. I need that amount. And you can contact them directly for more information. I believe you have a one year before you start paying any interest on the loan. Um, but again, they do have mobile stations in Broward County until June 8th, assisting with the flood for businesses. And they do also have an economic injury disaster loan. That one is strictly for working capital for businesses that meet financial obligations that cannot be met as a direct result of the disaster. 
and also home disaster loans. So you might be in a situation where your home and your business is close to each other and you suffered um, both losses in the home and your business. You can apply for a loan for your business and for your home. And for your home, it's up to $200,000. And that's the interesting part of that is to is for homeowners or renters to replace disaster damage real estate, personal property, including automobile. And as a resource, I wanted to add some of the resources for businesses that can assist you during a storm and that'll be available to you. And also we all, always wanna take care of our employees and our contractors doing these type of disasters. So I also added some resources for your employees that you can share with them as well. And lastly, for those of you that says it's not a hurricane preparedness seminar without a checklist, here's your disaster supply checklist for those that might need it. And then I say, if you have any additional questions or need uh, to explain anything in more detail, you can request a free consultation with us. And um, we're here to help you as much as we can. And our whole our goal primarily is to educate our community so that you can be well aware of what your choices are, what your options are, who's here to assist you. When you do put in a claim, what is your responsibility, but also what responsibility that the, your carrier has to you. And so with that knowledge, you'll be able to make the best decision as who represents you and who you allow to come in and take care of your home for your business. So um, if we have any questions now, we'll be happy to take questions. Oh, thank you so much, Judith. Does anyone have any questions? I, I see we have some really interesting comments and questions being asked in the chat and Sean is just getting in there. Okay. With, uh, answering those questions um, from Corla and others about deductibles. Um, obviously, um, I think, Sean, you're getting some of those questions because people may be surprised that there may be multiple. <laughs> yes. <laughs> multiple deductions, uh, deductibles, rather, depending on what has happened, which, of course, can be uh, surprising. So um, if you want to just address that in general, although I saw you clear it up in the chat, that would be great, Sean. Yeah, I'd like to really just elaborate on some of those questions. Um, let's start with the first one. Mm -hmm. I try to type as fast as possible, but <laughs> That's fine. okay. So the first question is: um, Is a hurricane considered wind-driven rain? Um, I did say yes, it can be. The reason why I said yes, it can, because remember, um, the way it works is when you turn in a claim, um, there's various factors that goes into it. The first thing, as an adjuster. Um, that when we come in, I say we because I did it for um, a good amount of years. The first thing we want to know is um, it's what caused the loss. So in this case, with the hurricane question, it's like, okay, it's um, a hurricane. So it's what we call wind damage or hurricane damage. That would be the cause of loss. Now it's like, how did it happen? And that's where it's wind-driven rain. And usually what wind-driven rain means that pretty much water found a way to get inside your house, normally through a window. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where, based on your your inspection, you would realize, okay, water came through a window. Obviously, your window is going to be, um, the drywall is going to be mushy, or um, you're going to see some sort of stain, um, what we call ensuing damage. So that's what wind-driven rain is. So it doesn't automatically mean like because you have a hurricane, you're going to have wind-driven rain and it's considered a hurricane. It might just be from just rain, you know, hard rain, especially um, in Florida. You know, we get a lot of hard rain. That might be wind-driven rain. Um, wind-driven rain is just a way, um, it's just our way of explaining what, how the damage happened, uh, if that makes sense to everyone. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So any um, follow-up questions with that before I get to the second one? Yeah, I, I got a, I got a, I got it. But I, I asked a question, but I, I have something else with that as well. Okay. Suppose you, you, you have a hurricane and it's not considered wind driven rain per se like that, but um, the hurricane comes, it blows, blows your roof off. You have a hole in your roof, you have damage. What is, what is, I'm thinking now, it sounds like everybody in Florida needs to get 
um, um, hurricane and flood and everything else along with it, if we're going to have hurricanes that come in or hurricanes that happen. So I, I don't know. I, I I see I see the I I'm sort of like in a quandary as far as the the split as far as if it's a hurricane or it's wind driven rain or a flood or something like that. Okay, yeah. So a uh, hurricane, nor uh, for the most part, if you live in Florida, the chances are you have hurricane coverage, unless mm -hmm. you live what they call like say uh, you might live in a condo, or um, say like say if you have a um, uh, commercial business you might have limited coverage or no coverage at all. This is where you sit down with your agent or your broker and you go down, you go down on your coverage. But normally, like say for any re residential um, places, chances are you're gonna have hurricane coverage. That's where the two, that's where the biggest deductible, you're gonna find the biggest deductible, which is between, normally it's between two to 5% of your policy limit. What your policy limit means is like that, um, it's coverage A. Coverage A is what we call your dwelling, your house. Mm -hmm. so, um, so there's going to be a policy limit there, and you're going to see on each coverage. I don't know, um, Judith, if you could bring back the policy up. One okay. of the policies. I'm sorry, Greg. Just to um, clarify that for you. Yeah, that's fine. It sounds. It sounds like when you cover your 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 place if you're in Florida, say you're on the beach, you need to get all the insurances that you can get. You know to cover it. Well, yeah, um, definitely, especially if you're on the beach, the chances are um, your coverage is going to be up there because again, it's based on you know um, zip zip codes, you know um, sections where you stay, and then you're going to have a higher coverage because obviously you're near water. Right. Right. Um. I'm sorry, not this one. Yeah, uh, was it that <laughs> one? <laughs> yes. Go, go back, go back one more slide. Okay, uh, I don't see it here. But um, normally would say coverage, oh, there it goes, right here. Okay, where it says, where it says coverage limit premiums, Mm -hmm. Okay, you see how it says coverage A, dwelling? Yes. You see the amount? It said, let's say this in this particular policy is 248000 right? Right. So what that means is if something ha were to happen to your dwelling, and we're going, um, let's just use residential for example. This is like, say, this is how much your house is covered for. So at mm -hmm. this point, it means if, uh, like, say, in your example, if, say, the um, hurricane come and blow the top of the roof off, the insurance company is telling you, I'm willing to pay up to $248,000 mm -hmm. to get your house back to pre-loss condition, which means it's anything that is covered. It covers the roof. It covers um, the house itself. The, mm -hmm. Like, say, if you have drywall damage, all of it will fall within that coverage. Okay. Um, and you see how, like it says, coverage B, other structures. Other mm -hmm. structures is pretty much, say, it's, it can be a fence. It could be, um, like, say, a shed, as long as the shed is bolted to the ground. If it's not bolted to the ground and you could pretty much pick it up, it goes under your personal property. Okay. So, yeah, so um, with your question, that would fall under coverage A, your house. And then if it comes and blow it off, that means it's a covered peril because um, they have what they call 16 perils that's covered. Mm -hmm. And a hurricane is one of them in Florida. So then it will fall under your um, coverage A. I don't okay. know if I clarified it for you. Yeah, I did. I appreciate it. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. Um, the next question, let's leave that up really quick, Judith, because I think the next question relates to this also. Um, okay, it says explain various deductible um, that may apply with a claim. Okay, so same on the same uh, area, like say if you look at where it says hurricane deductible, in this case it happened to be 5%, um, which it gives you the amount which equals to 12,000 and you see how it says coverage A, that means that's for your house. Um, and then you have all other peril deductible. The best way I could put that, and I think that's going to also answer the third question, 
let's just say you have the hurricane come and it caused damage um, to um, to your house, to your dwelling. And in the same token, it just so happened, you turn on the kitchen sink and um, your P-trap underneath the sink, it just started leaking everywhere. So now you have two different claims. You're gonna have two different claim numbers and it's gonna be considered two different claims. So you're gonna have a claim where the deductible is gonna apply for the hurricane claim. And you're gonna have a claim where the deductible the $2,500 is gonna apply for the water claim because it's two different cause of loss. Because remember, one is the, the first one was the hurricane claim that caused the loss. The second one was water due from a, a P-trap failure. So now you have two different coverages. So the insurance company is gonna look at it as two different claims. So the deductible is gonna apply. And I think that was the third question. The deductible, yes. So you, one deductible is gonna apply for uh, the hurricane. The other one is gonna um, apply for the water. Now, um, and that also in number three, um, in the third question, it was like, uh, let me just double check here. So can you, so one claim and you can have that go forward and so on. Um, yeah, so with the, let's just say you have a water claim, let's leave the, the um, hurricane alone. Let's just say you have a water claim and, and it just so happened within the water claim, you decided to leave your house because it was so bad. And now someone came and broke into your house. Whatever they, uh, that you're going to have two different claims, and but it's based on what they took from your house. Like say, insurance companies cover jewelry, they cover guns, they cover um, antiques. Now each of that, uh, it's not, the deductible is going to apply for the water, but then uh, the limitation is going to apply for the jewelry, the gun, because a jewelry, they might only cover you up to $2,000. The gun might be $2,500. So they're going to pay up to that limit of $2,500 for each of those items. So it's not so much the deductible that applies with that one. It's just the fact that that's the limit that they're going to pay for, if that makes sense. Um, just like... Um, one last, um, uh, I guess one last example, you could have, let's say you could have two two water claims in one house, right? Let's just say you have a water claim in the kitchen, water, same um, situation, you have like a P-trap where, you know, drop water everywhere and it damaged your cabinets. And then it just so happened in the bathroom, you have a backup and they're, they're not um, connected. They can't, and where if the plumber come, the plumber can't say, well, you know, it was like your cast iron pipe or your PVC pipe that caused the damage because it, all of it is clogged up. Now, even though it's water, it's, it's, it's water damage, it's still going to be considered two different claims. Because again, remember, the first thing the insurance company looked for is what caused the loss. And is it covered? How much is it covered for? Is there a limitation? Um, I'd say with, um, in the, under their endorsement where Judith would show you the $10,000 water um, damage. You might have damage, I've written estimates for say $60,000, but then the fact that they have a water damage limitation of 10,000, the most the insurance company is gonna give you that's 10,000, but you have $60,000 worth of loss. Chances are you're gonna get mad at your agent or your broker if they didn't explain that to you. But I've seen that happen a lot because normally we don't really take a look into our policies, especially into our endorsement to tell you what's covered and how much is it covered for, or is it even covered? Because sometimes it might be covered and then there, something in the endorsement takes it away. So those are the things that you would, um, usually when we sit down with clients, especially with us, um, before we do any type of work, uh, we wanna pull out their policy and really take a look to see what's covered and what's not covered because then we don't want to just jump in and start doing work. Next thing you know, you only have a $10,000 limit and we just did $3,000 worth of work. So automatically that's $3,000 that's coming from your $10,000. And I think that was all the questions, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we had a couple more slip in there. Oh. So Corlett was just asking, so when one of your claim examples, a homeowner would pay the 5,000 in deductible fees. Um, Yes, you know, you got to pay the, the deductible and then, you know, that's when the insurance kicks in. Yes. Deductible. Yes. As long as there's a deductible, you would, you would pay that deductible. 
And then the last question I see um, Dion uh, asked, he, he did hop on a little bit later. So he wanted to know um, exactly what you all do and how you work with small businesses. He's asking if he missed that earlier. So that was your explanation, kind of your lead in, uh, Judith, that you explained. Um, so I don't know if you want to give him a quick summary and put your link in the chat, <laughs> perhaps. Yes, I'll have um, Sean put the link in our website and our information in the chat. And Dion, we are seeds mitigation and restoration experts. So we assist um, individuals and businesses that acquire damages through water damage, mold, fire, um, any storm relief or disaster, we assist you with that. But our approach is more of a holistic approach. We do a review of your policy to make sure where your limits are. We give you an option as to this is what your limits are on each policy. If we're doing any water claim, and maybe it's going to be 12,000 and your limit's only um, 10,000. You give you an option to know, yes, I want to get everything done, so I'll pay the 2,000 out of pocket. We're not going to give you a surprise bill and say this is what it is. But also, we try to work with your insurance company as much as possible. We have worked with the insurance company. Where we've come to agreements with your insurance company as far as, okay, they have a limitations. Let's see what we can do to work with them and stay within that limitations. Of course, we're not going to do a $45,000 claim for 20000 but if it's a couple thousand here and there, we try to make sure we build that relationship with the client um, over making a couple more thousand dollars. So we work with you in that aspect. Um, and so, again, it's a per we're personal um, hands on with the business. So, again, most of the time, if you're calling, you're always going to call someone who knows about your claim. You were accessible where you can talk to one of us at any time if you have any issues. And again, um, we are all certified in everything that we do. So not only the technicians that we send into your home are certified and also knowledgeable of all the different work that they're doing, we are also certified in everything that we do. So when we're giving you this knowledge, we are hands-on with your water damage and we keep up to date with all the new technologies so we can be more efficient and cut your, um, cut your costs as much as possible. And working with small businesses is we try to help you stay within your budget if you need this assistance. Because someone, I have a lot of uh, businesses that suffer during the flood and they, they didn't know where to turn, where to go to. Because the bigger companies are like, this is my bill, this is my price, and if you can't pay it, you're just out of luck. Mm -hmm. So we will see what we can do to work out with you. If it's um, payment plans, if it's finding you resources in the community that will help pay for some of the damages that you have, if it's helping you stay within your policy limit. So there's, there's always a way that we can help to work it out. Being a small business, we want to cater more to our small businesses, also to our community. Because one of the things we also look at is in that community is they're not aware of um, what we do. A lot of people, we're that business that no one knows what we do until you need us. And then we're like, what are you mitigation restoration? Or they have, um, we go into homes all the time where insurance companies deny their claim because it's considered hard living because they have water or mold or different things in the home, but they've had it for so many years and they did not know that they could put in a claim because all the myths that if you put in a claim, your insurance is going to go up. That's a myth. They cannot raise just your insurance alone. If insurance go up in your area, zip code goes across the board. So a lot of times when you hear, I can't put in a claim because my insurance is going to hike next year. No, it's not you putting in a claim. So I've had clients that have legitimate claims, but because of lack of knowledge of the industry, they do not take care of this for years on end. And when we go in to do the work, their insurance company denies it because it says hard living because they can tell if a water has been sitting there for three days compared to three months or three years. And so therefore they're gonna say, you did not do what you were supposed to do to mitigate that loss and you made it worse. So therefore it's your responsibility and not ours. And that now that damage has gone on your record, which is gonna make it even more difficult looking for additional coverage. And so what we do is we work with homeowners and business owners and individuals in the community that for some reason thought they could not afford these type of services that we're here to tell you, yes, we will work with you. You can't afford the services. You can't afford the expertise. And we're here to help you any way that we can. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Judith, um, for this. I think <laughs> this gave us a, um, a, a real close-up view uh, and understanding of why we should understand our policies better. We should pay attention to those limitations 
And even if we pay a little bit uh, less upfront, perhaps we should be a little bit more wary of the higher deductibles because that is uh, money coming out of your pocket first. You pay first and then the insurance kicks in after that. So thank you for all the, the insight here. And uh, hopefully you guys can stay on as we kind of wrap up just in case anybody has any other questions. But please give Judith and Sean our virtual uh, <laughs> applause. Um, they did a really good job and answered um, some um, questions, tough questions here. So thank you so much uh, for being here tonight uh, and presenting. Uh, just one of the many benefits of being you know, a member of the chamber. When we find an expert, we definitely want to put your expertise on display, especially in areas where a lot of people don't uh, and won't know about a particular business until um, it's possibly too late. So thank you. Thank you, Judith and Sean again. Thank you. Um, I am going to um, just give one tip before we get to the prizes and surprises and all that good stuff. <laughs> and um, I, I was at a, an event um, some months ago. Um, and one tip that they gave us was, you know, we have these cell phones in our hands all the time. Walk through your home, you know, or, and walk through your business with that cell phone and document in a video exactly what you have, because you may sit down and write a list um, or verbally try to tell, um, you know, the insurance company uh, what it is you lost. But even as you're recording the video and you're listing off the things um, in the video, you'll notice you will notice things that you missed that you, <laughs> you you forgot that you had. But because you had the video, it recounted everything um, where it was, how it was placed, art, furniture, etc., in your home prior to the storm. So that's just one tip that I know I'm going to get on. Um, uh, before we get too deep in the hurricane season, just kind of walk through my home with my cell phone, walk through our office with that cell phone, just to document in a video everything that we have prior to suffering any type of loss so that we get all that we're entitled to based on our insurance coverage. So I did want to add uh, that one tip. Before we um, hop off and get into the um, uh, the prizes, I did want everyone um, that is here today to kind of do an introduction, just to say, uh, well, maybe you can, you know, just so we know who's on, you know, drop it in the chat, your um, name, your business, uh, perhaps your your um, email or website, uh, just so everyone kind of gets a feel for who's on the phone, what you, you know, on the call, what you do. Uh, so we're all connecting um, here tonight as well as learning um, with each other. So in the meantime, while everyone kind of drops their information in the chat with regard to their company, what they do, um, and their contact information, I'm going to pull this up. Um, let me pull this one up first. Kind of make an announcement. Um, we did put it up, but this is kind of our first event after we made the announcement. So <laughs> you all be the first to know. Um, I actually, uh, we launched as a chamber, our small business strengthening grant that we'll be offering um, for our members. You are well aware that at a December luncheon last year, we received $100,000 from the Truist Foundation. And we're going to be making sure we support our small businesses in the community with these dollars. So we are um, launching the grant officially and you'll see you know, more of this um in the days uh, and weeks to come but we wanted to make sure that our small businesses were um, coming out of the pandemic and moving forward in in strength and getting better and so what will we be helping with we'll be providing um uh, free consultations with um a free session rather with a quickbook expert we found that some of our um, members didn't have QuickBooks and needed that one-on-one -on -one session. We paid for in the past a one-year free, one-year subscription to QuickBooks um, to ensure that as a small business, you'd be able to quickly um, have your financial statements on hand. We'll also be um, paying for um, professional photos 
because unfortunately we get some photos um, of our members posed up next to people or whatever, and those aren't professional. We can't put that in our member spotlight. So we're doing that. We're also going to be doing a uh, 60 minute, 30 to 60 minute commercial for um, those that um, are approved, because once again, we want to kind of highlight the, um, you know, your company. And I think, you know, we have to step up our game a little bit with our marketing and have like these mini commercials. I'm excited uh, to get started on this, as well as providing um, consultations with HR professionals, legal professionals, so you make sure your company is structured appropriately and accordingly, um, and business consultants, because I'm finding that some of our small businesses don't have business plans and don't have strategic marketing plans. So that's just some of the things that we're gonna be doing. And so just really excited to share uh, that with you all. And like I said, um, if you scan it, the um, kind of like mini uh, questionnaire will come up. You, you answer those questions um, and kind of go through that process and we'll get back with you and move you through the, uh, the approval process for the grant, but just really excited to share that because this is, you know, why we started the chamber. We want to be able to um, help our businesses uh, become stronger so that they not only survive, but they in fact uh, thrive. So that's um, really important to us here at the chamber. So I see everybody sharing, yay. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get to our, our prize for the night. Um, I don't know if some of you saw on social media, if you attended the session tonight, isn't that cute? Got a, a <laughs> nice hurricane preparedness kit um, that we have here. So I'm going to, if you see, I, I kind of, I have names, but you probably can't see it. Names of everybody um, kind of on paper. So I'm going to kind of not look. <laughs> For everyone who uh, attended tonight, you have a chance to win this and um, we'll make arrangements to give it to you. All right. I think I shuffled them enough. What do you all think? There's enough shuffling? <laughs> all right. Let's see who won. Oh, <laughs> Dion, you won. <laughs> You're a winner, Dion Jack. So I will be um, touching base with you so that... Um, we can get your prize, your hurricane preparedness um, kit to you. Uh, so you can start off the season safely. Um, so lastly, I'll just mention, we do have a couple of chamber events coming up. We have a, a happy hour um, tomorrow. Hopefully the weather is good. We'll also be at the um, Broward Business and Beyond Conference tomorrow that is put on by Broward County at the Signature Grand from eight to four. Um, so hopefully you are registered or are going to come by. Um, it's a really great uh, resource fair put on by the county. They'll have a session on resiliency. They'll have a session on getting certified. And they have a really interesting speaker coming up. Um, so just look out for additional um, events that we have. Uh, we also will have an open house and new member orientation coming up this this month as well. So I look forward to seeing you all at some of our future events in person this month. Uh, so. Without further ado, I thank you for your time. Thank you for um, thank you. showing up tonight. Thank you once again, Judith and Sean, for sharing your expertise with us. Um, and if any of you missed uh, anything at the top, this video will be shared on our um, YouTube page. Uh, so you'll get to watch it and share it so that not only you are prepared, but your other um, family and friends and other business colleagues who you can share this video with. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank quick, you. Good. quick question. 